Okay, at this time I'm going to talk about the arthroscopic treatment of stiff elbow. What are the indications and what are our limits? I don't have uh, any potential uh, conflict of interest. And as you know, the, the main uh, function of the elbow is to position the hand in the space to act as stabilizer for actions such as carrying, throwing, pushing, pulling, and lifting. So uh, after this, uh, you accomplished that its function of the elbow is to uh, be uh, or have the elbow full range of motion to put the hand whatever you want. So a stiffness and contracture of the elbow results in low, loss of motion and difficult performing activity of the daily living. What are the, in elbow surgery, what are the general principles? Uh, you have to uh, know that open surgery uh, more prone to specific surgical complications uh, like contracture, atherotopic bone, and infection. What are the elbow arthroscopy advantages? Uh, that you have less contracture or less atherotopic ossification concerns, low uh, morbidity, less pain, early range of motion, decreased surgical injury to surrounding musculature, decreased recovery period, uh, improved articular inspection, and improved cosmesis. The disadvantage or concerns uh, for elbow arthroscopy at this time is that technically it's very demanding. You have uh, to require some experience to perform an elbow arthroscopy uh, by yourself you usually have to be with uh, another surgeon that have the same expertise or the same skills as you have to perform a good elbow arthroscopy. So it's, uh, as, as I told you, technically demanding at the, at the beginning, but after you perform some, some of them you can see that maybe elbow arthroscopy is very nice and maybe not as difficult as you, as you can think that they are. But, what are the pathophysiology of a stiff elbow and contractures? The osteoarthritis is one of them, trauma and fracture, other one, surgery even, if uh, produces uh, a stiff elbow, cerebral palsy, traumatic brain injuries, burns, uh, too much immobilization, and some congenital condition like arthrodiposis or congenital radial head dislocation. Uh, in pathoanatomy, we have intrinsic causes, uh, extrinsic and mixed causes of a stiff elbow. Uh, for example, for intrinsic, uh, joint incongruity, synovitis, loose bodies, in particular fracture, malunion, and osteochondritis dissecans and post-traumatic arthritis are the intrinsic causes of a stiff elbow. The extrinsic causes, uh, formation of scar following a burn, heterotopic ossification, addition, contraction of the capsule, ligament contractures, scarring of posterior oblique portion of the medial ulnar collateral ligament, and we have a uh, mix intrinsic and extrinsic uh, causes of a stiff elbow like, like a uh, late effect of intrinsic contracture can lead one uh, goes to another. And the prognosis uh, with the arthroscopic treatment is that patients are able to perform activities of daily living if the elbow range of motion of 30 degrees of extension and uh, 130 degrees of flexion is achieved. Most activities in the daily living need 100 uh, arc of motion at the elbow to be uh, functional, but uh, 30 degrees of loft extension is well tolerated by most of the patient. Flexion loss causes more dysfunction than extension, so you can lose usually uh, when you have an elbow trauma or uh, elbow condition that uh, you make a surgery, maybe you will lose five to 10 degrees of extension, but when you lose uh, the flexion, maybe uh, as I told you, the flexion is the most important uh, function of the elbow because if you lose flexion, maybe you can touch your face, you can 
uh, you can't brush your teeth or maybe uh, you will be limited to do your daily activities. So the treatment for the uh, stiff elbow is non-operative and operative. Uh, with non-operative, maybe too much physiotherapy and operative, I will uh, show you some uh, things that I, I, I want you to see. So the non-operative treatment is uh, some medication like uh, non-steroid uh, anti-inflammatory medication, physical therapy with active and passive range of motion exercises uh, that usually is the first line of treatment in the most of the cases. Uh, the contracture uh, results in less than 30, uh, in, uh, but in contracture of less than 40 degrees. Uh, aesthetic splinting uh, is not a good option. Maybe uh, maybe some persons will, or more, many surgeons will think that uh, aesthetic splinting will work, but uh, it does not work very well as you can see with the results and the publication of the static splinting. Uh, you need to move the elbow to get more uh, range of motion usually. But the treatment that I will show you is operative treatment and you have many uh, options for this uh, treatment. Uh, capsular release or release of the posterior band of the MCL, a, a osteophyte decision, destruction or um, interposcianal arthroplasty, total elbow arthroplasty, or musculocutaneous neurotomy. But the, for the arthroscopic treatment, we have some guidelines that Felix Awa published uh, a few years ago, and we have some um, limits for the uh, expertise that we have as arthroscopic surgeons. And, Felix Awa uh, divide the limits in some stages from one to five. And the stage one is the beginning elbow arthroscopy, the stage two, limited experience with elbow arthroscopy and experience arthroscopies with other joints. The stage three, experience elbow arthroscopies, the four, advanced elbow arthroscopy, and the stage five is an early gut. But what we have in, 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 in each stage, Stage one, beginning of the elbow arthroscopy, maybe you can do diagnosis, arthroscopy uh, before an open surgery. You go with the scope into the um, articular surface, see what you wanna see, and then you perform the open surgery. The stage two is a limited experience with elbow arthroscopy and experience arthroscopies with other joints. It, you can perform a good diagnosis arthroscopy, confirmation of instability before open repair, removal of loose bodies, spur uh, debridement, excision of the posterior lateral plica, and arthroscopic irrigation and debridement of contaminated joints. Stage three is an experience of arthroscopy. You can do uh, all the stage two plus uh, open, um, open or closed arthrofibrosis, debridement, uh, for lateral epicondylitis, um, the arthritic uh, elbow, maybe you can perform synovectomy, excision, right excision, and some other procedures that, that we have in the elbow uh, with an arthritic condition. Complete man management of osteochondritis in seconds, uh, maybe the fixation of some fractures, and olecranon bursa removal, and synovectomy for arthritis, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, chronic infection arthritis or other arthritis. Stage four is an advanced elbow arthroscopy. Uh, you can repair tendons. You can uh, reconstruct some instabilities. Uh, you can perform the open redu uh, close reduction and internal fixation of displaced uh, intraarticular fractures, uh, repair the treated tendon and release the ulnar nerve and stage five, I, I think very is very complicated to get this stage is to um, to perform an allograft posterior lateral reconstruction, fascial interposition, arthroplasty, medial ulnar collateral ligament repair or reconstruction, radial tunnel release, and distal biceps repair. Uh, as you can see here, it's a short video. You can do uh, 
synovitis, and we are cleaning the, the articular surface of the elbow, as you can see, evaluate the anatomical structures that we can see with the scope, see the radial head, and you can do uh, whatever you want in order to uh, get a, a good result. So the rehabilitation is uh, very important after uh, any uh, elbow surgery, open or closed. Um, remember that this surgery usually is performed under regional block mm -hmm. anesthesia, and maybe you can control the pain in after, uh, after the procedure. A continuous passive motion through full range of motion, you can, you can perform it with uh, some external uh, braces. Uh, it's very important to compress uh, dressing to help with the swelling. Uh, and usually uh, we can do very early therapy that active, and passive range of motion. Uh, not very frequent that we use extension splint, but in some cases we need uh, to get or to maintain uh, the first two days the, the extension of the elbow. Uh, in some cases, as I told you, we use a dynamic or uh, an a static progressive splinted, uh, but it will depend on the condition. The outcome of the arthroscopic treatment is uh, improvement in range of motion can be variable. Most patients will retain two thirds of the motion gain at the time of surgical release. You uh, will not have the 100% uh, after immediately surgery. You will lose some range of motion with the, in the next weeks, usually. And as you can see, uh, the results of the Arthroscopic treatment of the stiff elbow is very very convenient because uh, you can see that uh, we can get more range of motion than open surgery and the publications uh, confirm that. And in summary, we can tell uh, we can say that arthroscopic treatment of the stiff elbow is very safe and effective when it's performed by surgeon with appropriate uh, level and surgical skill. If you compare with open techniques, a treatment or such um, treatment allows for a better visualization and treatment of interarticular causes of the contracture. And the complication rates between the two techniques seem to be comparable. However, permanent neurological complications have been reported more frequently with the arthroscopic technique, but you can uh, draw your your anatomic points of uh, of the in the in the skin before you perform the arthroscopic surgery, and maybe you can see uh, the ulnar nerve, and you can protect uh, the this nerve because uh, maybe is the uh, the most important part of the of this surgery to protect the ulnar nerve. Uh, that is what I have to show you this uh, day, and thank you, Sati, again for the invitation.